Sons of the Forest's building system is one of the most unique on the gaming market, and getting familiar with it can take some time. So here are 50 plus building tips to bring your creations to the next level. Let's get into it. You can use stairs in your roofing to act as a skylight in your house. Place down sets of stairs in the sections where you want the skylight. Then remove every other stair from each section to create some gaps. The gaps that are left between each tile will be enough to let a small amount of light in, brightening up your interior and making some pretty nice shadows. You can do the same with normal roofing tiles, although I prefer the look of the stairs, but it all depends on your preference. When chopping up logs into smaller sizes, looking at them from a slight angle will make it easier to find the cut option, opposed to looking at them straight on which can make it seem a bit finicky. Alternatively, you can even place the log as a pillar first, which will make finding those chopping points even easier. Consider placing wall shelves and using them as scaffolding during the build process. This will make getting to higher levels a bit easier. Or they can also be used within a build, to act as an alternative to stairs for getting to the second level of a house. Fish traps can be placed on land. Pair this with a wall shelf that's low to the ground, and it can be made to look like a dog or cat shelter in the corner. Consider preserving the nature around your base for a more immersive living environment. Or you can take it a step further and incorporate nature into the build itself, like having a tree or rock become some sort of centerpiece within your base. If you find yourself relentlessly swinging your axe around to undo mistakes when building, go to the settings menu and check your keybind for dismantling. This will make removing unwanted logs much, much easier. As you're building, tap the dismantle button to test whether or not certain support beams can be removed. This will then save you the trouble of finding out something won't work after you've already built everything around it. You can use different sized planks when constructing a rope bridge to give it a more varied look. When building a fence, you can add additional sticks to the middle portion of it, which will then allow you to add more on top, extending the overall height of your fence. If you choose to build your foundation directly over top of the ground, the terrain does have some give, and will slightly adjust to match the level of your build. However, I'd recommend using small poles and beams to create a level foundation when building over uneven terrain. This keeps things consistent and makes expanding later on much, much easier. You can build directly over top of a bunker entrance. Not only can this be convenient for the use of a 3D printer, but it also makes for a pretty cool basement. Use half logs to create struts to support your overhanging beams. This will allow you to extend your beams up to 5 squares out without needing any pillars underneath, giving you a bunch of extra space down below. If you have a floor tile that is not wanting to go in the same orientation as all your other floor tiles, it's likely due to a diagonal beam in the foundation below, which for some reason has an influence on this. But if you remove it, you should then be able to place your floor tiles in the correct orientation. Standing torches and skull lamps can be built directly onto fences. When placing skulls for the skull lamps, the skull will always place facing directly towards the player. Keep this in mind when placing them to get the correct orientation. You can use platforms from the survival book to build foundations high enough that they can even be elevated to match the surface level of deep water. Or you can wait till winter and build a base on the surface of a frozen lake. This is not only easier, but it's more cost effective than the previous method. And once the ice thaws in spring, your base will continue to stay afloat above the water. Not only is this cool, but it's also practical in the sense that no cannibals or mutants can reach it for 3 out of the 4 seasons. So just attach a couple zip lines and you'll be good to go. Speaking of which, use zip lines to quickly transport logs from other parts of the forest to your build location, if you want to preserve the natural elements nearby. This is also great if you're looking to build your base somewhere up high, as logs can also be transported upwards without any hindrance from the effects of gravity. Pair this with a log holder at the end of your zip line, and the logs will automatically organize themselves into place for you to grab when you're ready. You can also use this technique when building the high parts of a build, not only to traverse up and down, but to send logs up so you don't find yourself going back and forth so often. Place a layer of stone walls two levels high with half log posts on each corner, with a plank over top. Then add some wall shelves connected to the plank, and you've got yourself a countertop which can actually have items placed on top of it. Perfect for making a little bar area. In the settings menu under the gameplay section, you can toggle off structure damage if you're having trouble with cannibals and mutants constantly wrecking havoc on your base. Keep in mind that this will also negate you from damaging your own structures. If you want to place a set of stairs flush with an outer wall, you'll often notice that you can't fill in the outer wall with logs once the stairs have already been built. To fix this, simply build up the wall before making the stairs, then add in your diagonal foundation for the stairs, and you'll be good to fill the rest in. If you want to make a set of stairs with a railing, set up your two pillars at the desired height you want your stairs to reach. Place a diagonal beam on the side where you want the railing to be. 
This can be on both sides if you want, but for this example I'll have a wall on one side. Now, you'll need to place a quarter log on top of the diagonal beam, but you'll notice that the game will prompt you to lift the beam instead. To fix this, place a pillar over here, and then place another diagonal beam to the same spot as the previous. Grab your quarter log, and the game will now only give you the option to lift the beam you just placed, which is perfect. You can remove these two logs we just placed, and your quarter log is now in the right place. Add another beam connecting to the top of your staircase, and place another quarter log up here. Then just connect the two with a plank, and you've got yourself a nice railing for your staircase. You can use struts to make a nice open arched doorway, perfect for use in this case as an entrance onto a porch. You can make see-through defensive walls by using a combination of quarter log poles along with full log beams. Just stack them up layer by layer, spike the quarter logs on top, and you'll have a wall that looks like this, giving you more vision outside your base and the ability to shoot any attackers with ease. If you have one, set down a radio and switch it on so you can jam out to some banger tunes while you build. You can also place radios on wall shelves, which can add an extra layer of functional detail to a room. If you build a spiked wall to defend your base, any walls left unspiked will be recognized as a potential weak point to attacking cannibals. Use this to your advantage by placing these walls next to sources of fresh water or on the edge of cliffs, and watch as cannibals plunge themselves into deep waters or fall from massive heights. You can still create a pointed roof on an uneven amount of foundations. First, build your roof up to the center point where you have a flat surface. From here, stack a three-quarter log, then half log, and finally a quarter-sized log all on top of each other. Once you have that, you can line the sides diagonally with a couple full-sized logs, and you'll have a pointed roof. The angle of it won't be completely flush with the other diagonal beams, but it usually does look better than having a completely flat top. You can use zipline ropes to add another layer of detail to your builds, for example to add some more layers to a piece of fencing. You can create an intersecting roof that connects flush like this one right here. When doing this, the main issue you'll have is trying to get diagonal beams to cross each other. When you try this, you'll notice the game won't let you place more than one diagonal beam. To fix this, place a straight log pole off to the side, and connect another diagonal beam down from that. You'll notice much like the railing tip that the game will now only give you the option to lift that one up with the next log pole you place. Now you can remove the two logs you placed to get the alignment, and you'll have your diagonal beam coming down to a pole. Do this in every area that you need to, fill in the roofing with your planks, and you'll have a nice intersecting roof. Zip lines can be incorporated as elevators if you place them vertically within a build, kinda like this. Spike sticks can be placed through defensive walls. To do this, place a stick on the ground just behind the wall. Then use the guided placement line to get a placement right behind your wall. Once you have this, place sticks along the entire face of your wall. Spike them through with your axe, and then fortify them with stones. If you want, you can even line some logs in behind and follow the same steps. With this, you'll be able to add even more layers and deal more damage to any potential intruders. Spike sticks can also be placed on ramps, making for not only a cooler looking defensive wall, but one that works pretty well too. Using that guided placement method from the first wall example can also be used to line fencing down the side of a rope bridge. Just place a stick on a foundation, then use the guided snap point to get a placement on the bridge, and line it all the way down. Do this on both sides, reinforce them with stones, put in the actual fencing, and you've got yourself a safe rope bridge with some added style. If you're building a porch area and find that you can't connect a railing and pillar together, then here is the solution. Every pillar requires a flat log next to it to function as the base, and not just a log from a wall face. Take out any pillar you have next to the one you want to make, replace this with a quarter log pole, or whatever size you need, and then place a flat log connecting the two. This will now give you the ability to place down your pillar flush with the railing. Chop off the excess, and everything should be good to go. If building is your main focus but you don't want to go through the constant hassle of gathering resources, you can activate console commands by typing in Cheat Stick. This will then give you the ability to press F1, which will bring up the console commands window. Here are some of the most useful commands that pertain to building. First up is spawn item, space the item name, or ID, space item quantity. For example, spawn item log 5 will spawn in 5 logs. The second one is log hack. Type log hack space on. This will give you an infinite amount of logs to place as you build, which is what I've been using for the majority of this video. And a big tip here is when you're filling up floor tiles and stairs, rather than holding a log, hold a stack of planks instead, and the process of filling in will speed up exponentially. Third is instant book build space on. 
This will allow you to place any item or structure from the survival books instantly, without needing to fill them in or gather resources. Really handy once you get to filling out your base with some interior decoration. And a couple other quick mentions to tack onto those are Super Jump On, God Mode On, and Season, Space, Winter, Summer, whatever season you want. If you're starting to pile up a bunch of unwanted log pieces that are getting in your way, you can save the game and then read log. When you load back in, any loose pieces in the world will have despawned, leaving you with some open space to work with. This is also something to keep in mind in the opposite manner, in that you should make sure to use or store any extra logs you have lying around before logging off, if you don't want to waste them. Some logs when building won't have the dismantle option, and the game will prevent you from taking them down, even if it seems like they aren't supporting any part of a structure. If this is the case, you can use your axe to destroy them, and more often than not, no other parts of the build will actually be affected. Create lampposts along pathways with the use of sticks and hanging skull lamps, a cool yet simple way to spice up the areas in and around your base. Lastly, you can build a narrow boardwalk with the use of firewood pieces, which are just half-split quarter logs. It's pretty cost-effective, easy to do, and gives more of that handcrafted feel to your base. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and consider subscribing. Leave a comment letting us know which tip was your favorite and if there are any more you'd like to share. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.